Um, thank you so much, Stefan, for, for your time today. Not at all. It's always a pleasure. So without further ado, uh, tell us what Thrice Exchange is, and especially with the COVID and um, everything that was being impacted uh, as a result, uh, how did COVID impact your company and your venture? Sure. So uh, Rice Exchange is a blockchain-based platform for trading rice internationally. Um, we have uh, we have over 75 users now from 25 different countries around the world. Uh, I think we have users in every, every continent. Um, and we went live six months ago, uh, and we've seen a nice pickup in volumes, um, especially... Uh, actually, in, in April, we've seen a big, big increase in volumes. As I think people get used to the platform, they get comfortable with how it works, they, they can do bigger transactions. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're excited by, by what we've achieved so far. Now, this is, this is the first time that such a digital platform has existed, right? So this is something exactly. that's totally new. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it gets a little bit of, uh, of getting used to. We do a lot of we give our users a lot of training um, and uh, there's great functionality already, but there's going to be even better functionality um, moving forward. I think you're going to see some of the announcements we're going to make will, they'll, they'll help um, our customers to, to finance their trades. They'll help them to get better, uh, better logistics. Um, and also we're going to help them. To, we're going to give them data tools. We're going to give them more data, ways to analyze their own data and ways to make better decisions, right? That's really what this is all about. It's not just collecting data, but it's, it's, it's how, it's how they, they get to use it for their advantage. Well, exactly. Uh, so tell us, what was the problem in the market that you were trying to solve and you created Rice, Rice Exchange? Fundamental problem is one of trust. Um, that is to say, we had users who... Um, uh, even though they uh, they wanted to uh, be able to shop around and get the best um, the best offer, they felt they felt that it was risky to do that with people that they had, maybe hadn't traded with before. Um, so, uh, and and it's a market where it's quite difficult to establish a reputation um, because we don't you don't have. Uh, basically don't have a venue to do that and that's i think that's true of that's true of most um commodity markets so what was the trust issue um that uh, you were trying to solve uh, the trust between the uh, the farmers the trust between the stakeholders the so uh, if, if you yeah. can just open it up the, it, it works on a few levels i think the first level is is just basically how um you know do I, is this person who he says he is, you know, do I know? Um, uh, so so uh, what we do is we have quite a strict onboarding procedure. Um, we make sure that the people that come onto the platform meet certain requirements. Um, and this gives, a, and because everybody that's on there went through the same process, this gives them a lot of confidence that the people that are on there, um, you know, Basically have Basically a KYC. Um, we, we don't perform KYC, but we certainly, um, we make it easier for other people to do KYC, yes. Okay. Um, that's one element. I think the second element is, uh, you know, is there a way for me to measure someone's historical performance, right? Um, mm. So by, by having a blockchain-based platform, we allow people to create a true track record, all right? Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's no way to do that. And then the third way is really around how the trade itself is, is agreed on and then executed. So by using a smart contract, um, we allow the different stakeholders. So it's not just the buyer and the seller, but it's also the other service providers like the inspector, the finance provider, the shipping provider, uh, and the insurance company. We allow them all to see um, that they, they all basically have access to the same information. Um, and they, they, they can trust that that data is, is immutably held. Um, if you can uh, walk us through the, the first and last user, like how the process works within the Rice Exchange uh, platform, it would be really great. Okay, sure. So um, 
the first step really, will, it's usually led by a buyer. The buyer will have um, a, a need for a certain amount of rice, could be, could be a single container if they're a specialist buyer, um, could be someone that's buying several thousand tons. Um, that person could be a distributor, they could be a mill owner, in which case they're buying paddy rice. And they want to go out in the market and see where there is supply and where, where they can get, um, you know, where they can get the best price. And so they'll be able to do that on our platform in two ways. They can either post a public offer, which means everybody sees it, um, mm -hmm. or, or they can do a private offer to their preferred suppliers. Okay. We give them two ways to do that. Either way, once they actually enter a negotiation, it's always private. It's not like everybody can see what's going on. And then what will happen is the different suppliers um, will be able to respond to that. And we have, we have several different types of suppliers. Again, we have small farmers. I think the smallest producer we have on our platform is doing a couple of hundred tons a year. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have some uh, mill. We have some large mills, and we have some exporters who do um, over a million tons a year. So there's a big range on the platform. But when that buyer finds the seller that um, when they reach an agreement with the seller, um, then they will, they create a contract on the platform which then becomes the smart contract. And once it becomes a smart contract, then all the different items in the contract are uh, effectively executed by the platform automatically. So it will send off notifications. Um, uh, one of the first people it's going to notify is going to be the inspection company so that they know to be ready to inspect the, to inspect the rice. Um, next, you're going to have the shipping company so they need to tell the shipping company where to pick the rice up. Then the inspection company will, as the rice is being loaded, the inspection company will put daily inspection reports on the platform. Quite often it can take a week to load all the rice on. Um, and so you get these daily reports. And then once, the, the, once the, the, the rice is all loaded on board and the ship sets sail, then you will get the bill of lading, um, which is probably the most important document actually presented on the platform. Next, the, the ship will sail. It might stop along the way. Typically, it's going to take anywhere between two and six weeks in order to arrive at the destination. When it gets to port, um, the platform again will notify the buyer. Sometimes payment is made just as it's about to arrive in port. Sometimes payment is going to be made um, uh, after it's arrived. In all cases, um, the bank, nearly always there's going to be a bank financing the transaction and the bank itself will have requirements. Um, uh, for instance, they, they will want to know that the goods are insured. Okay. So again, that's another, another document that must be provided on the platform. And, uh, and then after, after payment has been made, what we also then track is, you know, was that, um, was that rice, did that rice meet the expectations of the buyer, right? Was it, was it what was agreed in the, in the original contract? And was it, as the inspection company said it was, all right? And yeah. if there's a discrepancy there, then um, what that means is that either the inspection company didn't do their job, um, which we think would be unlikely, um, or it means that there was something happened to the goods when they were en route, okay? Um, but the point is, at the moment, the way rice is traded right now, um, it's almost impossible to identify what happened. Um, and by making it much, much easier to identify what happens, we believe that all the parties, all the stakeholders are incentivized to act in an honest way. That's, that's the aim. Well, that's, that's very interesting. When did you guys launch? When was... Uh, uh, At the end of uh, September. So uh, just... Uh, two weeks ago. So, two, so, uh, six months ago so uh, how uh, also um, well with the COVID and the pandemic we saw that it impacted a lot of supply chains um, mm -hmm. specifically um, obviously supply chain for food and agriculture um, so in your point of view how the supply chain of uh, rice was being impacted and how how did you observe that through your platform right so so COVID started just you know before we launched um, and what we saw was, uh, we saw two really big impacts. So first one was that people, people aren't traveling. I know you travel a little bit, but most people, 
for most people, it's very difficult to travel, especially to the the origin countries where the rice is coming from and destination countries. These are not always difficult places to go to at the best of times, but it's now it's been virtually impossible to travel. So people have had to get used to uh, trading without doing face-to-face -face meetings. They've also had to be, get used to problem or troubleshooting without doing it face-to-face. -face. Um, and what that has therefore meant is we think as a result, people are much more willing to accept platforms like ours. They're much more used to doing, uh, not doing business face-to-face. -face. So that's definitely helped us. The other thing that happened was um, it became, well, there was a lot of disruption to, uh, to logistics and ports. Um, you know, uh, some ports were temporarily closed. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes there were bans put out on on uh, exports from certain countries. And what that meant was that people, uh, rice buyers needed to find alternative sources and alternative supplies. Again, that's good for us, but um, I think the disruption to logistics has uh, made commodity trading difficult across the board. We saw again in last month with Suez, there was an additional disruption. Um, right. So it's it's been a difficult month. It's been a difficult year. Um, I think uh, the first six months, uh, you know, there was still quite a lot of logistics disruption. We're just now starting to see the market coming coming back to normality, um, starting off this month. Right. You mentioned about the the technology and digital technology and how inevitable it is these days to actually avoid that specifically with everybody working virtual virtual or um or even like different products now being i mean the e-commerce for example platforms uh, how do you think that with like obviously agriculture is one of those industries that haven't been disrupted by technology um too much because of the farmers and obviously they like the classical way um, and how do you think now with the advancement of technology, specifically drones and um, satellite observation, observations and so forth, and now with the blockchain, how these technologies can actually advance the agriculture or even like precession uh, agriculture? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's the, it touches so many um, different areas, not just of, of uh, growing the crop, but how it's uh, how it's transported, how it is processed, how it is traded, uh, and even how it is consumed. Right. Um, so, as you just asked me a little bit earlier, right now we our, our platform covers the leg from effectively from a warehouse in one country to a warehouse in another country. All right. But over time, what we want to do is we extend that upstream all the way to the farmer and then downstream all the way to the consumer. Um, but it's our view that the, the most important uh, piece in that journey is actually the middle bit, all right? If, if once you've solved the middle bit of the process, which is what we're doing, um, it's actually quite, it's, re it's easier then to go up, upstream and downstream, and then you get the whole chain. And we're already, we're, we're already working with partners. Um, we have a partnership with SRP, which is a sustainable rights platform where we are effectively integrating their database of rice farmers. So their certification of rice farmers is being inter integrated into our platform. On the other hand, we, are, we have some customers who are supplying supermarkets in Europe and the US. Um, and there's quite a, a, a rapid move right now for um, retailers to offer not just organic rice, but um, rice which is being grown in a sustainable manner. And we, we provide both the way to, to track that, but also actually the, the most important bit is having a marketplace where you can find the right the suppliers who are, who are offering it in the first place. Um, in order to, right now, very, very little rice is grown in an organic way. Um, and in order, for you, in order for the supply to increase, rice farmers need to be sure that they're going to be able to find buyers who are going to offer them a better price. And so having an effective marketplace is really important. So you just mentioned that, and to that, making a comment, how, how hard is it now to work with the farmers, specifically with kind of like um, bringing awareness and like education in terms of, you know, like 
advanced, all these like technologies and application in the agriculture, how do you convince the farmers to actually go ahead with your platform? It's, it, it's not difficult um, to convince them to come on once they know about us. <laughs> so you right. know, a lot of it right now is just is we're doing joint marketing with the, sustain, with the sustainable rice platform so that the rice farmers know about us. I think the more difficult part of it is convincing farmers to adopt new techniques which may involve an upfront investment um, uh, in, uh, without them being sure they're going to get a better price, all right? Right. It's really important they see buyers, um, you know, offering better prices for organic rice. And the only way to really do that, that they believe, is to have that in a marketplace like ours. So I think, mm -hmm. I think that's the market signals are going to be really important here in terms of convincing farmers to become, um, to become organic sustainable rice producers. I think the other part of it, which is not core to us, but you know, you asked about the impact of technology, obviously is there are now technology tools to help farmers um, to, uh, to improve their yields, to, uh, to track what um, exactly how they're growing the rice or, or, or whatever um, crop it is they're growing. Um, these, these are the tools which now exist um, if you talk to the certification companies, you know, they have access to satellite data. They can actually see, they can, they, there are now ways to tell how a farmer is actually growing his rice to measure the environmental impact. Um, and eventually that will actually be, that will also be integrated into our platform. So we won't just say this rice is organic, but we'll tell the buyer, you know, exactly where it came from, uh, you know, give them a geo plot, show them, uh, you know, how it was grown. This stuff is, you know, I'd say in our, t in our case, probably 18 months away, but we're already having the conversations uh, and we know where we're going with it. Well, this, this, is, this is fascinating. It's, uh, it's using technology exactly where we need it. Um, and I, I believe, what is the population of the world that is consuming rice at the moment? I think 90% um, of the population consumes rice um, you know, at some point every year, it's a billion. Uh, uh, it's a billion. I mean, people's impact. So it's, it's definitely a exactly. I was going to say most, everyone eats it, but if you look on the, who produces it, we reckon over a billion people um, are either rice farmers or they depend on uh, their dependents of a rice farmer. So literally, there's one billion people in the world who, if you can give them a better income, all right, um, by increasing the the income they get from rice growing then they have an impact there is no there is no greater um i would say a venue for impacting um of having a global impact than finding a way to get a higher income to rice farmers and so again that's one of the key things our platform will do is it will allow the consumers not just to know where the rice is coming from but how much of how much money actually went to the rice farmer all right and, and that's that's fascinating. You know, we're already seeing the, with these with these cooperatives that we now have on the platform from Cambodia and Thailand and Vietnam, for instance. Um, you know, they're getting direct transparency on uh, you know on, on exactly how much money is being paid for the rice that they're selling. Well, that is great. And w which countries are the ones that are providing the supply mostly the supply of rice? Um, in order, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Pakistan, um, Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina. The, that's that's the order. So basically, was in Latin America, Latin America, and Asia, and and, and mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, South Asia are the are the big supplies. Sorry, Cambodia. I forgot to mention Cambodia. So okay. yeah, they're, they're the big. They're the two big areas. Sorry, and 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 also USA. Don't forget the USA. USA is actually a big exporter of rice, um, especially to the to the Caribbean region. Well, that's great. Um, so, in terms of how many supplier um, are right now playing on your platform, like what is the number? Do you have a number? I said there are seventy five users. Um, over half of them, I think it's forty of those are suppliers. Uh, so, in terms of the method of payment, do you also accept cryptocurrency? How does that work? 
Not at the moment, um, or at least we, we, we don't provide a payment mechanism. The payment is made, the payment is agreed between the buyer and the seller on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, in theory, they, they, you know, they could agree payment in Bitcoin um, right. or, or right. any other cryptocurrency. That would just be part of the contract. Right. And uh, what are the other news? Uh, has there been any partnership? Uh, what have been the latest updates with the Rice Exchange? Yeah, I mean, there's this. We just had a, announced a fantastic partnership um, yesterday with Intertech. Intertech is um, is a global inspection company. They're the largest inspection company in rice. So over over a third of all rice that is traded internationally is inspected by Intertech. So we're really excited about that partnership. We're going to do a bunch of um, of joint marketing with them over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, we will be shortly announcing a partnership for trade finance, so making it easier for our users to get finance for their um, for their uh, for their trade. Uh, and then we will also be launching a special scheme, insurance scheme, for people that are on the platform. So yeah, we're going to be adding we're, we're going to be adding a lot of um, a lot of extra uh, service offerings um, to the to those that are on the platform. Cool. That, mm, that's actually, that's, that's great. Um, perfect. Um, thank you. Uh, it, it was great to have you. If you don't have any further um, updates, perhaps we can uh, come back to you in the next six months and hear more about uh, the race exchange and how it's uh, impacting more of lives. I, well, I, one other thing maybe I can mention, which is we're just in the process of um, creating a, a holding company um, which uh, is going to allow us then to, to move into some additional verticals. Um, so the, the technology platform is designed to be used not just for rice, but for other agricultural commodities. Um, and uh, you, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be announcing uh, some of those new verticals soon. So yeah, as soon as I know more, I'll be able to tell you about it. Oh, I can I can just easily uh, take a guess right now. Probably would be cannabis or even other other herbs. I get asked about cannabis quite a lot. Um, we we uh, at the moment we're focusing on the traditional agricultural crops um, uh, and the and livestock. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't want to announce it yet, but um, the 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 service providers that we have involved. Um, I mentioned the inspection companies. Uh, shipping shipping lines like Maersk, you know they're they're interested in they want to they want to move with us into other verticals because basically they've already we've already done a lot of work integrating with them and they want to be able to leverage that um, you know with with additional uh, business offerings. Perfect, that's that's exciting. So definitely looking forward to that one. Thank you, Azam. Thank to speak you. To you.